Ah, welcome to another draft physics presentation. Something like that. Trying a different piece of software for screen capturing and whatnot, just as just to have versatility when I need it and such. <laughs> so anyway, it's not as fancy as OBS, but maybe the volume is better. Uh, the audio track might be better. We'll see. Um, so yes, I'll do some comments and. Uh, say something of some kind. I guess I really am um, trying to think of the next strategy, which I guess is just to compile all the unanswered questions, unanswered questions, into a list. Maybe I'll think of some of them while I'm making this video. Um, and um, go from there, because, you know, pretty much so much else has been covered in videos here and there. Um, and yeah, I just don't want to be insanely redundant. Uh, something like that. So anyway, a uh, useless comment here anyway. Hi Gary, just a quick question. Do you happen to know if anything about time crystals? Apparently scientists have discovered or claim to have discovered an orientation to the universe. The only question remaining is if it is straight or lesbian, blah, 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 blah. Oh, just fascinating. Uh, goodbye. Uh, anyway. All right, so this universal expanse guy is... All right, so he's sort of a Tesla devotee. So he's, I guess, some sort of ether nut. <laughs> I still just don't get it with ether. Um, because if you really cut it down, you know, if you, if you made the, if, if we, you made an ether, it would still come down to something granular. It would have to. Um, and the fact that your ether doesn't spread means, you know, like sand. You know, because it can't be like water, really, because, you know, water has the tension, and that's what makes all the waves spread. So for ether to work, it has to somehow poke its way through a, a field in a different way, because there's no tension between everything that would spread any influence. And so... It, it sort of comes down to the same thing. If you have something moving in a straight line, perpetuating to something in rays, <laughs> I just don't know why you would bother creating the extra redundancy of the ether. But anyway, you know, and the, the Jeff Yee guy has a really complex ether theory, but it still depends on, you know, again, to deal with the energy problem. He puts the kernel of energy inside of all the atoms on Earth, essentially. I guess it gets smaller than that, some sort of center thing, <laughs> you know, some sort of quirk that just keeps pulsing, uh, you know, with energy, like jellyfish or something. And, yeah. I, I just, I don't know why people are so willing to jump on those kinds of bandwagons, because that just doesn't, doesn't, say anything to me that seems reasonable. Anyway, alright, so he's, this is on the subject of the resistor thing, so I'm not going to beat that horse to pieces, but I'll just do my whatever, I'll deal with this point, but I mean, I don't really, you know, I want to make a private video, but anyway, I don't find that interesting, so I don't know what that means. However, if you put two equal resistors in series, is very interesting when you consider that one of the resistors has double the heat of the other, yet the same current flows through both. So the idea of putting them in series in a circuit means they're just independent things. They, the whole parallel things means they have a shared job. That is, whatever happens he here and here is going to be the, you know, the byproduct of what both of these are doing. Where when they're in series, they're just independent things. They don't, they don't have anything to do with each other technically. They're, they're not related in any way. One doesn't care what the other one's doing. It's just reading how much voltage. Uh, yeah, you know, there's just no connection between the two. All right, I find that interesting because junction between both resistors is half the supply voltage. So he's got two of the same resistors in series, and he finds it interesting that 
in that circumstance, the voltage here and the voltage here, and these are the same value resistance, is half. So this voltage is half of this voltage. Well, of course it would be. They're the same resistor. Not surprising at all. Um, this means that half the voltage drop created the heat. They both get hot, but anyway. Uh, this means the remainder, which is in the other half, is dropped across the last resistor, yet it only, yet it is only half as hot as the first resistor. Well, that just has to do with how the voltage. There's always going to have to be the same current, and what you're doing is dropping the voltage, as stated. That's what a resistor is doing, it's just dropping the voltage. So if there's 15 volts here and 7 volts here, this, the task of dropping 7 volts to 2 volts, for example, or you know 12 volts to 5 volts, or whatever the parallels would be, it's more work to drop the higher voltage. So that's why there's more heat. Alright, this means the remainder... In my experiments, the hottest resistor is the one closest to the positive side of the power supply. Well, it's good you said in my experiments. Uh, I haven't done the experiment, so I can't say. Um, I'd say that doesn't sound right. It shouldn't be. That's all I can say. Which does not make sense if you're using the electron flow theory, where you expect the electrons to create heat at the negative source end of the circuit first. <coughs> well, clearly they have these notions of current going one way and pressure going the other. So voltage is somehow moving one way and pressure is moving the other way. Not pressure, uh, uh, amount. Um, so who knows which way is up. But I guess I would argue that if you could definitively prove that the bottom one is getting hotter, then you're arguing basically that the smaller voltage being dropped creates more waste or heat in performing that task. And I find that hard to believe. <laughs> so there must be some other explanation, like the voltage must be moving in the opposite direction somehow, which it can't be. But whatever. Um, I, you know, I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna do the experiment. So, however, all this not making sense talk could be just misinterpretation of what's really going on. Also, if you put an ammeter on the positive wire and another one on the negative wire, they indicate that the same amount of current flowing into the circuit. Yeah, well you're going to pull a certain number of watts, but clearly the resistor is going to impede that total. So, you know, I don't know what to say. I mean, wattage-wise, that part of that heat that you're feeling in the resistor is a loss of wattage. So they can't actually be carrying the same. The first resistor carried more wattage, the second resistor lost some of that wattage by getting hotter, as you state. Just as getting normal heat, it would have lost some. So you can't have exactly the same current through all parts of the circuit. Uh, flows out and back to the power supply. If this is so, what is actually powering the circuit? The pressure is powering the circuit, the voltage. Without the voltage, there's no circuit. Uh, since we know heat and work is produced and the same amount of current, now it's not the same amount, so you just have that wrong. Um, oh well, you know, it just depends on how, how we're going to use language, I suppose. Um, let's see. I mean, you have amperes which is a volume. Um, now you multiply the volume times the voltage, get the watts. So it's amps times volts equals watts. So if you lower the voltage to get the same watts, you'd have to increase the amperage. Makes logical sense. So clearly it depends on what your load is demanding. If your demand, if your load is demanding 300 watts, the circuit will produce it at the lower voltage. But what's the catch to it? 
I mean, I have to do it at a higher amperage at a lower voltage. A resistor in such a circuit wouldn't be very constructive, but it depends on if it's being used to turn something on and off. It has some purpose that justifies the waste it's going to create. Now, yeah. all right, since we know heat and work is produced and the same amount of current that performed this work is just flowing back to the power supply. Uh, same amount of current to the power supply. Well, again, just depends on on the, you know, if you don't have a load, then you have a short. And so the resistor is the only thing that's keeping the power supply from burning up, from being shorted. <laughs> so, you know, it's a little different kind of a question. But I would just argue, I guess this is a point where I'll just say, this might not be rewarding enough for me to get into the technicalities of, because I'd have to get myself, you know, refreshed from my, you know, 20 years of not doing circuits anymore. Um, you know, I just don't know if it's worth my time, so sorry. Best response I can provide. Aaron Ra recently took on, I, I just think the basic theory of voltage and amounts, you know, understanding that one is the pressure and one is the number, is pretty solid. All right, Aaron Ra recently took on, I really hate Aaron Ra, a flat earther. Oh, you know, what a waste of time. Geranism? Who cares? Well, took on as, a, as in debate might be a bit of a misnomer. A great, aggressively, aggressively bullied would be a better description. I was sort of seething while watching it because... Jen, eh, eh, get away with lots of garbage, like for instance not taking him to task on the theory of gravity and bogus math. Well, I don't know how he could really fuck up the gravity argument. I mean, it's a real big, it's a really easy argument against any flat earth notion. Is the fact that, you know, unless you're saying the moon's flat too or something, <laughs> you know, gravity makes spheres um, and as soon as something is liquid enough to be turned into a sphere it is so you know any at any point you could get weightless let's say in, in just even flying in an airplane so you don't even have to go into space you can see that water droplets go round um, and they don't do that just because of surface tension let's see um, I can't be absolutely sure Surface tension wouldn't be enough, but I'm pretty sure it wouldn't. But anyway, <clears throat> all right, so we won't use that example. But I'm just saying, once you get something in space that has any size, it will crush all of the pieces, all the edges that stick out will be smoothed over. So as soon as something gets big enough, it goes spherical. So, you know, gravity, in my opinion, is a great argument against flat earth because then you have to have a whole different weirdo theory about how gravity is being created and it certainly isn't going to be one that's going to hold the solar system together <laughs> just, I mean even the, I don't I, you know whatever I, I don't even want to frankly just quit bringing up stupid subjects I mean flat earth is just so fucking dumb uh, Aaron Ross shouldn't be wasting time on this crap it's like the square asshole theory I, I mean just <laughs> it's just so stupid I mean, it's it's, it's 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 nauseating to think that you people will waste time doing this shit in 2018, and then people will indulge it. All right. Well, anyway, since you subscribe to much of Mild Mathis' ideas, I don't do any of that. Where the, where the, who, where the fuck did you get that crappy nonsense from? What what what, what ideas? Oh yeah, we share an opinion that uh, conventional physics has got a lot of holes in it. But otherwise his ideas, opposite to that, are not anything I share. It would be nice to see Mr. Ra be taken down a peg or six. What say you, sir? Well, uh, first of all, I don't know what he said that was so outrageous. So I don't know if I'm going to waste my time. I mean, he, you know, there's no point in having a physics conversation 
with someone who doesn't say he's any kind of expert in physics. He's a he's he's a ex religious kook who debunks religious kooks. I don't even know you this this name you have, Ozzy Disciple. I don't like that either, so I'm gonna delete it. This just because you have a stupid screen name. Fuck, disciples. We don't need any more of those in the world. Don't be anything's disciple. Thoughts on a flight flat, flat Earth? Well, it's Luke Skywalker, so it's obviously somebody wasting people's time. So we'll block that asshole. All right, we're back to the regular slop. I did notice the. I'd read this comment before. It's still in my spam folder, so I, I saw it. <laughs> so I said, well, maybe I'll deal with this. Um, Robert Price guy. Um, it's really sad that people have to keep subjecting themselves to someone who just never ever tries to understand what others are saying, but instead just spouts whatever brain fart pops in his skull. You didn't comprehend blah 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 blah. No matter what you say, there's no chess piece that can't move. No matter what you say, there's one chess piece that you can't move. And it's the measurement of space and time are fundamentally dependent on velocity. So I had dealt with this before, but I just wanted to add another little shot at it. Um, because, you know, here they have a theory, okay, that basically it isn't just the clocks being broken. And he's basically claiming that somehow it's, it's, it is some sort of measurement thing. Um, and that, that there isn't some real philosophy change here. And that somehow, because a clock is broken, it means actual time changed. So because something cycles at a different rate, somehow the universe around it <laughs> or something has a different time. The time is nothing but um, s these kinds of cycles. Now I would say for a biological organism it's sort of true that if you can slow the metabolism down, like if every single cellular process took longer and your brain synopsis took longer and everything took longer that in effect okay your passage through time all right will be indistinguishable from a change in actual time because everything's changed and um, you're not going to be able to detect it again the difference how you how you've migrated from some um, other timekeeping scale. Um, but the clear difference is, is that in their theory, they say things like photons are in gravity twice as long because of their time dilation. So they're, they're saying there's a real consequence to the photon telling wrong time. So the photon gets time dilated. The argument is its fundamental clock is broken and somehow it received twice as many rays from the sun because of it. That's the part that I'm saying isn't right. And their part where they claim that because something's moving and it shoots a, a photon, that somehow that photon keeps moving with the thing that shot the photon. And photons don't do that. The photon went here and it stayed here and this moves away. The photon doesn't go with it. So those are just two obvious points to make how this isn't just about broken clocks. They think that because of this velocity thing that this photon doesn't know what perpendicular is anymore and somehow is moving forward with the, the thing that shot it. That somehow like a baseball it's been given two velocities but somehow they won't admit that it has two velocities. They won't admit the consequence of that, which is it has to gain speed, like a baseball would. So it's these are real arguments. So you can pretend there's not a real argument here, but there's real arguments that they're saying the physics around the things that they say are being time dilated, they're changing. I'm the one saying light is always light. It always does one thing. It leaves in a direction and it goes in a straight line in that direction forever, theoretically, until it hits another piece of matter. 
that's it. So, yeah, so it's basically this whole huge comedy wrote. It's basically just ar arguing this one thing over and over, like there's some kind of real effective thing called a time dilation. When you're not dilating time, you're retarding personal metabolisms of objects. You're changing how they consume time, but you can't change how much time they spend somewhere. That's an absolute thing. They spend a certain amount of time. And I could argue the sun's radiation is at a, an, a, is an absolute thing. It's a certain amount of rays come out of the sun in a certain amount of time, and you can't change that. So a photon can't, by dilating itself, pretend <laughs> that it's getting more sunlight in the same amount of time. It can't tell the sun, be twice as bright and hit me with twice as many photons. It can't do that. And that's essentially what, because a photon is essentially a graviton in terms of its impact. So I'm just saying the force of gravity can't double um, because the clock on the photon broke. Uh, that just ain't right. It ain't correct. So, back to published comments. And let's see if there's anything else. Um, so I did, um, let's see if my subscriptions come up here. Yeah, they sort of do. Don't sort of fit very well, but, oops, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, Oh, yeah, I have the microphone in the wrong position, of course. Uh, let's see if it's worth changing. Uh, let's just save this video a little bit. Well, I probably won't save it because obviously that won't undo <laughs> what happened in the previous amount of time. Um, so the you know the D Hilster people are a little bit. Uh, <laughs> you know, I yeah you know, I understand that you know I haven't been very kind lately. So, um, but yes, the uh, Bob did delete my link to the video, um, so apparently he has no interest in responding um, to any of the points raised in that discussion. And um, you know, I don't mind it. You know, I, I, I frankly would probably rather debunk the whole. I, I'm kind of sick of everybody does it. You know, the um, not everybody, all of the ones trying hard seem to do it, where, you know, they, they have a soccer counts and they uprate their videos. And, you know, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's tacky as hell. Um, and, um, you know, it just this, this whole, you know, the particle model, he calls it, the particle model. You know, like they own the subject of particle model. You know, it's just so... And this is a guy, like I said, he's playing this whole thing like the dissidents should all get together and be friends. Well, I'm not going to be friends with somebody who's claiming they got the particle model because they don't got the, you don't got the particle model. And frankly, if anyone wants to, if anybody's interested enough to listen to your videos and then point out the flaws in them, you don't even have the courtesy, okay, to respond. That's pretty fucking lame too. Um, but you know all these uh, the, you know goofball icons and oh he's doing it for the young people the young people need a goofball icon if you don't have a goofball icon you can't inspire a young person to care about physics and some of that is true because this professor lewin is a bit of a goofball i mean he's he's always doing little jokes and i mean you know he'd be a good grammar school teacher but you know it is a little bit uh, come on <laughs> you know Physics is an adult subject. It's really not goofball subject. Ugh, it really is depressing. Anyway. So, is there anything else I have to... It's nothing else. Yes, there's really not much happening in the, my world of physics that I'm connected to anyway. So if anybody has any decent links to uh, people doing physics in any kind of interactive way online, you know, where they're willing to... Um, be challenged and something like that and to interact in some way uh, I would be interested I mean we just keep this video short I mean I guess I could pop up my uh, 
<laughs> the great list of unwritten writing. Where the hell is it? In mock software? None of these things are correct. I must have deleted it somehow. I was pretty sure I had it though. Oh, it's this. I renamed it, I guess. Oh, it was a different file, I guess is what I did. So it was one file, and then I changed its name to another file. So just all the little talking point crap to get to. Um, and such. So I don't know if there's any... I want to do the magnetism video. Um, but, you know, I do want to get it out of the way, just... You know, I don't want to spend too much time debunking time dilation. And the whole idea of it, all that we really understand there to exist is a relationship between velocity and certain mechanical functions being degraded. And I would argue that my dancing analogy, you know, quite satisfactorily explains the source of that um, effect. And you don't need to bend all of space and time to explain it. <coughs> now, uh, let's see, there's some other thing that's important here. I don't think so right now. Uh, so, yeah, lots of things with the two slides. I want to do some experiments on the, you know, just see if I can get the reflection on the wall, the uh, backward reflection. <coughs> the other experiment I want to try is some um, time lapse photos of. <clears throat> like a laser going through paper, you know, and see if you get rings from the light that goes through the paper, theoretically would be going probably next to atoms, and so it would tend to diffract. And I wonder if you can get a ringed pattern with a time-lapse photo, stuff like that. So, uh, and I guess that's it. Yeah. So there's lots of silly subjects to deal with, but I just don't want to spend too much time. I don't want to waste much time on the silly subjects. I mean, the big. I mean, silly in the sense the big ones are magnetism and gravity and some explanation of nuclear function in terms of you know allowing for the existence of chemistry, the ability to connect atoms to atoms through some process. You know, those are the big subjects. The rest of it is all just uh, the Einstein mush. Huge distraction. And the quantum mechanics, of course. The, the particle crap. Oh yeah, that was the other thing too. Pirro, <coughs> you know, he makes these little references. He's made remaking videos again, but they're just horrible. He's, you know, full of antics now and plays little clips of sound bites of crap and thinks that all makes him more professional. It makes him more a member of idiocracy, in my opinion. But anyway, um, made some reference that he had some, oh yeah, he's got some points to make about physics. <laughs> so, yeah, sure, sure you do. Um, so anyway, yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's hard to watch his videos to for any references, so I don't really want to do that. So hopefully he'll make one video on that subject, uh, rather than throw his little bits and pieces in the middle of his garbage videos. So anyway, um, so yeah, so there's no nothing. I got to find somebody who wants to interact on the subject of physics and has something called balls. Yeah, they have to be able to take a little bit of uh, discord in the conversation. <laughs> Shit. Anyway, so till the next time and such. So just a test, really. Test video. Just want to see if this sloppier, easier version works. The funny thing is, I can't move it now. <laughs> yeah. That is strange. Okay, I mean, I can move this, but I can't move that. But anyway, who cares? Alright, till next time. And such. I guess I can just hit the stop button down here. I must see if that works. Remove? No, I don't want to do that. Uh, got it. It's the opposite of Windows. You gotta learn how to. Oh, it's not a right click. It's a blah blah blah. So.